Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Um, first of all, just an update. I recently reported that for many years, drug companies and their partners in academia have failed to post results of clinical trials with drugs, and the FDA and government agencies haven't taken any action against any of them. The law that requires that the drug companies and researchers post trial results also calls for fines to be charged in the event of noncompliance, and billions of dollars are due based on noncompliance, yet absolutely not one dollar has been collected. Well, the days of secrecy and withholding of data may be coming to an end. A federal judge ruled last week that drug companies, device makers, universities, and research institutions must turn over data from clinical trials conducted in the U.S. from the years 2007 to the years 2017. A lawsuit was filed by Peter Lurie, former FDA commissioner, and Charles Seif, a journalism professor at New York University. Representatives from FDA declined to comment after the ruling, but a spokesperson from the Department of Health and Human Services stated that the agency was, quote, evaluating the court's decision with the Department of Justice to determine our next steps. Well, what next steps could they possibly have in mind? And what could the government possibly claim as a defense for not enforcing the law and making data concerning drugs and devices public? It sounds like they're going to dream up some kind of basis for filing an appeal. But um, at least in the court system, there seems to be rash a rational look at this. I mean, you know, sometimes the things that I talk about here, it seems that almost any rational person would agree that what should be done. But we don't have rational people working in our government these days, do we? All right, I want to talk about an issue that I get a lot of emails about, and it has to do with older people and protein. Um, there are many people saying that, well, we have a lot of people saying that people need more protein, and I've talked a lot about that. Um, but it particularly comes up with the elderly, like older people need more, more protein because they're inevitably gonna you know, disintegrate if they don't eat more protein. And um, this isn't true. So it is true, however, that human bodies change as they age, and the aging process accelerates if you don't take care of yourself. Even when you're younger, you can age faster than what your uh, chronological age is. This is particularly true with muscle mass. I mean, younger people will lose muscle mass due to inactivity. It's just that the loss of muscle mass is faster and more devastating in older people. Now, the reason it's more devastating is that I think most people would like to live independently. I've never, ever talked to somebody who said that their goal was to end up in a nursing home laying in a bed for a few years. But if you do want to live independently, one of the things that is crucial is having strength, balance, and coordination, and that requires a muscular, uh, well-developed body. Well, according to some experts, increased protein intake is required to build and maintain muscle, and seniors are told that they have to increase their protein intake even beyond what's recommended for other people in order to stop or slow what is considered the almost inevitable loss of muscle mass due to aging, and that's simply not true. Most studies show that increased protein intake does not result in increased muscle mass. And in fact, research shows that when people eating varying amounts of protein all engage in the same physical training program, even consuming as much as twice the amount of protein in some groups doesn't really make any difference. It's exercise that builds muscle mass, not eating protein. And this is not an exception for older people. A 2018 study found that higher protein intake didn't increase body mass, muscle, or lean body mass, muscle performance, or any other marker of physical function or well-being in older adults. In fact, I think the advice promoting higher protein diets as a strategy for preserving or building muscle mass in seniors is a terrible disservice to them because it distracts from what does actually work, the right type of exercise. The incorrect messaging about this can promote sedentary behavior, which has the same negative effect on health as smoking. Physical inactivity is a risk factor for many chronic degenerative condi uh, conditions, and it contributes to premature death. So seniors who want to age well need to develop strong muscular bodies, and muscular bodies come about as a result of exercise. A frequent misconception, I think, that prevents people of all ages from becoming strong and fit is that being physically, they think that being physically active is a substitute for structured exercise. It's not. Leading a physically active life involves things like walking your dog, weeding your flower beds, and tasks like cleaning and laundry and cooking. 
physical activity is a good thing. I engage in a lot of it. But it's not the same as exercise, which is defined as a specific series of activities that includes specific frequency, intensity, duration, and effort. There are two primary forms of exercise. Endurance exercise is designed to improve aerobic fitness and to maintain heart health along with the health of the lungs and the circulatory system. It includes activities like fast walking, jogging, running, and cycling. Endurance exercise, when performed frequently enough for long enough periods and at appropriate intensity, is effective for burning fat and maintaining optimal weight. Resistance exercise, on the other hand, increases muscle mass and strength. In order for people to improve or, and or maintain fitness, they need to exercise at least five days a week with two to three sessions of resistance exercise, two to three sessions of aerobic exercise, and stretching, preferably yoga. Studies show that this effort pays off. A meta-analysis of 47 studies with 1,079 participants showed that resistance exercise improved both upper and lower body muscle strength, particularly at higher intensities. Another analysis of 49 studies, including over 1,300 adults age 50 and older, showed that resistance exercise increased muscle mass by an average of 2.5 pounds in only five months. The researchers noted that that reversed that resistance exercise was capable of reversing loss of muscle mass, but it also built new muscle too. In other words, older people can become leaner and more fit and more muscular than they were when they were younger if they're willing to do the right type of exercise. It's never too late to start exercising. In fact, I found a study that showed that older people who have never exercised before are capable of building muscle mass just as well as people who are the same age and have trained as athletes and competed even into their older years. Well, it's human nature to hope for easier ways to accomplish many things, including building and maintaining health. And let's face it, eating protein sounds like a whole lot more fun than going to the gym, but it's not a better idea than the gym. The key to living independently, as I said before, is to build a strong muscular body. And uh, this, is required, this is going to require exercise um, on a lot of it, and which is not to be confused with physical activity. And I hate to tell you this, but you can't build muscle mass in the kitchen. You gotta get in the gym and do some weight training. And um, that's one of the keys to optimal health, long life and independent living. All right, that's all for today and all for the week. As usual, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and uh, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. I'll be back to you next week with more news.